In this presentation, I will be going over the following three concepts that are utilized in relationship research, self-verification, paralanguage, and attachment styles. The movie The Adjustment Bureau provides a great example for those concepts. I have chosen this movie in order to discuss self-verification, paralanguage, and attachment styles, as well as how they relate to modern-day relationships. Directed by George Nolfi, The Adjustment Bureau is a fictional romantic thriller that focuses on the intense attraction between a man and a woman, both who experience various challenges in terms of their relationship. David Norris, the main protagonist played by Matt Damon, is a congressman campaigning to become the senator for New York. Then we have Elise Sellis, who is played by Emily Blunt. She's a professional ballet dancer who falls in love with David. Both characters elicit their own unique traits when it comes to their connection. That is, the way they are attached to each other, how they show attraction through verbal and nonverbal cues, and self-verification. In the movie, David is portrayed as a charismatic congressman who eventually loses his chance of becoming a senator. Through his efforts, however, he has high social status or social capital. He likes to be in front of crowds, and he has a talent of delivering his message to others without flaw. He is influential in terms of how he conducts himself professionally. Through this, he becomes likable by his peers. Elise Sellis, on the other hand, seems very reserved as she talks only when she is spoken to. However, every time she interacts with Norris, she becomes playful and reciprocates his advances. In the movie, Sellis practices ballet dancing on multiple occasions as well, performing in front of crowds, indicating that both characters very much value their profession and like to be in front of people. For the first concept, the idea of paralanguage is highly utilized in this movie, that is, the way the protagonists interact with each other through sustained eye-gazing, close interpersonal space, body language and movement, physical touch, tone of voice, and facial expression. So here's a short clip from the movie that further emphasizes verbal and nonverbal cues, both which indicate forms of attraction and paralanguage. Student council. My guy would know how to tie his own tie. It's a clip on. Oh, I wish. That would have been my other favorite moment of your campaign. Do you still have a chance? Is it over? He, he crushed me. Sorry. Well, losing has its advantages. Like what? Uh, for one thing, as a politician, you're never really alone unless you're asleep or in the bathroom. Usually. In the clip, it was seen that both individuals shared an intimate space together, being one and a half feet apart. Notice that there was lots of eye contact taking place, as well as body movements. Elise was leaning over to David multiple times, touching his tie to maintain a form of physical tension. She also elicited a physiological response, some heavy breathing taking place, and a change in pitch of voice. These verbal and nonverbal cues all relate to paralanguage. The second concept I would like to share with you today is attachment styles. Proposed by Kim Bartholomew in 1990, attachment styles are ways in which human beings connect to each other. In romantic relationships particularly, individuals may elicit an avoidant attachment style, which suggests that a person is either self-reliant and uninterested or even fearful of intimacy. In contrast, someone that craves intimacy may elicit a preoccupied attachment style, someone that is highly anxious to any threats to a relationship. Both attachment styles are highly relevant in this movie. Let's look further. Going back to the preoccupied attachment style, individuals here have high levels of anxiety of abandonment. The excessive fear of loss usually is a big indicator of someone with a preoccupied attachment style. Individuals may feel uneasy and vigilant towards any threat to the relationship. They become needy and jealous. In the movie, it is portrayed that Elise receives multiple phone calls from her ex-boyfriend. This upsets David significantly, and he questions her quite a bit about her previous relationship. We see him ask various questions, indicating that he is insecure in terms of her past lover and fearful of potentially losing her to a perceived rival or threat. In contrast to David's attachment style, the fearful attachment style is characterized by high avoidance of intimacy and high anxiety of abandonment. People with a fearful attachment style may want emotionally close relationships, but find it difficult to trust others completely or depend on them. They are on the avoidance spectrum. In the Adjustment Bureau, Elise is very hesitant to create a romantic relationship with David. She informs him that she was heartbroken before in her previous relationship. For example, in one scene, she tells him, I don't want you to hurt me. This connection scares me. 
I don't think I'm quite ready for this. I've been hurt before. This indicates that she is fearful of intimacy. Developing trust with a partner is difficult for her. The last idea I would like to share with you is self-verification. It defines how people have an innate need to validate their self-concept. It is characterized by the desire to receive feedback by a romantic partner that is consistent with the way we view ourselves. In essence, we seek those who view us the same way we view ourselves. When people with a positive self-concept associate with others who compliment and praise them, they receive feedback that is simultaneously self-enhancing and self-verifying. In contrast, individuals with a negative self-concept prefer feedback that generally focuses on their flaws or faults. And that concludes the three themes that are relevant in the Adjustment Bureau and in modern relationships. Thank you for watching.